please. And Councillor Cartmel. Thank you. So uh, I find myself rather bemused at the moment because of uh, the conversation around the bike plan the last couple of days. Uh, when I was a youth, the province gifted to the city of Edmonton for the 75th anniversary of Alberta, the Capital City Recreation Plan, which was the first bike trails in the, universe, in the uh, River Valley. Uh, my dad was a school teacher and uh, so we had summers off and every weekend he would bundle me and my three siblings and my mom uh, into our van, two cars in the or two bikes in the front, two bikes in the back, and two bikes shoved into the van with the six of us. And we rode up and down those trails. Uh, I trained for six marathons on those trails. Uh, there is no greater fan than me of the bike trail system. Andrew rattled off uh, a bunch of numbers, and in those numbers he included the amount we're spending on roads. And what always gets bundled into the road conversation is Twilliger Drive. And I know how sick and tired you all are of hearing about this. I really do. But that project is, includes a trail spine. It includes uh, two dedicated pedestrian bridges. It includes a dedicated pedestrian route across the Hende that will connect the not quite 30,000 people that live there to the rest of the city and the 35,000 people to come. And that is often overlooked. It is glibly defined as a freeway project when it is absolutely not. And you can read my inbox for all the people that wanted to see the $1.2 billion freeway built and not a $240 million road with a bus lane and a bike trail on it. And I've been working my tail off to maintain support for those elements. So that leads to my bemusement here. I represent those 30,000, which are 65,000 people in a short time, that live south of the Hende. They have on-demand transit. That is the only thing the city gives them. There's not a splash pad. There's not a skateboard pad. There's not a library. There's not an arena. There is nothing for recreation beyond a few playgrounds in that whole part of the city. We have roughly 30 amendments to continue talking about. But if not one thing changes, as of this moment, there's $16 million in debt room. There are two libraries that are desperately needed in this city, one in southwest Edmonton, one in northwest Edmonton. There's no room for that. Right now, today, even if we advance those to checkpoint three, there's no money left. If the LRT to West Edmonton has a cost escalation and we need to match that, because I think we're responsible for that, there's no room for debt. If we have to find money to put into the Southeast Valley line to get that thing up and running, there's no debt. There's no room. So my question is, should we preserve some room? So you would say, well, why the bike plan? Why not some of these other plans? And the answer is quite simply is the, these other plans were committed on. And to back out of them creates all kinds of contractual obligations that we cannot buy our way out of. And we heard about that in private. I can't get into a lot of detail about that. But the bike plan has got a lot of money in it that is not discreetly assigned to contracts. And so all I'm offering today is a more measured approach that as we enter into those contracts, we do it eyes wide open as we continue through these four years. That is what I'm suggesting. I recognize as much as the next person that $100 million against the $1.8 billion that Andrew outlined is not proportional. I get that. But I, will, I have an obligation to speak to all of the other things that the ward I represent need. That right now today, and I'm not talking about roads, I'm talking about all those other amenities, that right now today, we cannot give them. And with a plan that is predominantly core oriented in a part of the city that does not have much to point at, that's hard. Everything else in this omnibus, 
I will support. That's my hesitation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cartmel. 